Spence Lewis here for InsideTrackNews.com with the 47th Annual Snowball Derby post-race intact with our third place finisher here tonight, Derek Dorn out of Bakersfield, California. Fresh Coast is here. Long haul, my friend. Long haul. I mean, after after some of the cartoonish bad luck you've had down here, it must be real refreshing to uh, to finally see the fruits of your labor going to a, a podium finish here tonight. No, it is. It's it's neat to have uh, third time for me being here, but first time for Campbell Motorsports. And this this whole race started six months ago, if not more. All the prep time and uh, energy it takes to put all this stuff together to get out here from California, being 2,200 miles away, and to come to a track that we're not familiar with, run a tire that we're not used to, and to be in a car that we're not exactly used to running all the time. So it's kind of a, always an uphill battle for you. And then, you know, this race itself is tough to make in general with the 50, 60 cars they had here and only 30 make the show. You know, to have the pressure on you for qualifying and to come back here, it takes a lot of luck in the race, you know, to complete all laps and be there for the finish and make the right calls for the pit stops at the end. And, you know, it's neat for these guys. Mike Keen headed up the operation and Byron Kel Campbell's owners. They, they put together a good group, good car, and uh, top threes, nothing to hang your head about. Now, how radically different are these super late models from what you would run on the SRL Tour? I wouldn't call them radically different. There's probably an extra 10 to 15 pounds of tubing on the right side of the cars run back home. Um, different carburetor package, different tire package. Uh, it's a little bit narrower, a little bit shorter wheelbase. Same body, so they look the same from the outside. Um, and then also the aluminum interiors on these, they can run almost everything aluminum versus those things you got to have steel interiors in them. Um, kind of res resorting back to what the NASCAR Southwest Tour used to be, they kind of follow or mirror, mirror what those rules used to be. So there's probably an additional, you know, you come out here with a, with a perimeter car, you're at a disadvantage big time. So you definitely got to cross your T's and dot your I's in order to come out here and run with these guys. So the two pieces that were picked up to, to bring down to Pensacola, that was, they were purchased specifically for the Derby? Yep, we were actually, we, um, I think as a program, we're going to sit down here at the end of this deal and sit down and figure out what we can do and what we want to do next year. But um, I think as far as running the SRL Southwest Tour full time, I don't know if we'll do that as much as we have been in the past. But I think uh, <laughs> running some more open shows and more big money races, similar to Derby, there's one in Washington, a big one in Kern on February 28th, right in our backyard that we're really focused on. So. I think running four to five of those and then hitting missing some current races and maybe picking up the bigger races for the SRL Southwest Tour. Um, you know, it's kind of in the cards, but having these two in our lineup will allow us to kind of run any track we want in the country. Now, the, the last two attempts you made at the Derby, although the luck wasn't there, it was never an issue making it late into the race. Was this the same? Did you employ the same strategy that you have in the past? Or did you try to go with something a little bit different this year? It is. You just kind of, it's, it's really difficult to do as a driver, but man, you just almost got to sit back and relax for 250 laps and hope to gosh that all the pit stop stuff works out because it's just, you get some guys on different tire strategies, some guys are really good short run, bad on long runs, and it just kind of always makes, everything makes a full circle eventually by the time the end of the race comes around and you got to have, you got to have your fenders on it. And it's, uh, you know, when a guy fast gets to your back bumper, you can't hold them off for another 100 laps. You just kind of got to wave him by and let things fall where they may. And, you know, you, you kind of give a little, give a little, take a little, give a little, however you say that. But <laughs> give and take, you know, out there on the racetrack to try to get, uh, keep your stuff clean and not get taken out and be there at the end like we were. I think it's easy to sort of underestimate the West Coast talent, but how would the fields that you compete against on a regular basis stack up against the, the bevy of talent that we had down here? It's tough. You know, uh, Jacob Gomes came out here and he uh, he's a solid top five contender, you know, back there in uh, California. I think they fought some car problems and stuff like that, so it wasn't a real honest showing for them. But I think uh, this is the tightest field that you'll ever race against, talent-wise and speed-wise. And qualifying, fast time was a 2-1-2. Two, two. I was a 3-0 at 11th, and I think a 4-5 was a cutoff for the entire field for the top 30. So to get that small of a gap, between a field of cars that big is it's, it's unbelievable. Like our nor more normal SRL Southwest Tour, our last race at Vegas, there was three tenths between me and fourth place, you know, which would have been the difference between being in the show and out of the show. So that, in that retrospect, the talent and the, I guess the pressure and the expectations in your performance has to be top notch, on point, all weekend to make it to the whole weekend. It takes a ton of support just for the teams that haul 15 minutes down the highway to be here. So when you haul clear across the country from Bakersfield to Pensacola, I, I'm sure it's got to be an army of people that, uh, that make this happen. Thank the folks that, uh, that put in the work to, to make the Derby possible. Man, so Mike Keen heads up to Operation Campbell Motorsports. I couldn't miss all the crew guys off for getting somebody, so I don't even try to start there. But they put a lot of work into it, not only at home, but then coming out here eight or ten. Actually, we've been out here almost ten days now. So they come out here way early, tested Sunday, Monday, here all week worked our asses off. We had some uh, problems underneath the hood on Thursday. They just kept digging right through it, and I can't thank the sponsors enough. We've got Campbell Motorsports, Furnace Racing, We've got the Kern County Raceway Park, and that big open show, the Winter Showdown coming up uh, in February 28th, supporting us. We can't thank Double Eagle, 
Alta Vista Cold Storage, uh, SPI, Steve Red Service Pumps Incorporated has been a huge support to us and all the friends and family that came out here to, you know, not only support us but help us through it and uh, all the followers on Speed 51 Facebook. I mean, we've got a lot of love from a lot of people and it's, it's neat to be able to represent the West Coast but then, uh, you know, to be able to, to see all the people that help you get somewhere because we couldn't do it without all of them. And, you know, it's a team, it's like anything else, and you know, you lose one leg of the stool, you tip over. So it's great to have such good people around me. Byron Carroll Campbell is the owners. We really have a great organization. I'm just pumped to be driving for them. With a run like that, I'm sure you picked up a few new fans. Where can they follow you on social media? And DerekThorne.com will do it. If, uh, if you're on Facebook, I think DerekThorne6 is under Facebook, and Twitter is the same. So if you guys are out there wanting to follow, love to have you. There you go, folks. Podium finished, fresh coach is active. Derek Thorne is here, third place finish the 47th Annual Snowball Derby.